Welcome to the EPD Ireland Guide on how to read Environmental Product Declarations or EPDs. This video will explain to you how to understand the information and numbers presented in EPDs. Let's get started. An EPD typically contains the following set of information. 1. General information. 2. Information on LCA methodology. 3. Product information. 4. Impact results. 5. Additional information. We will explain now what is normally included under each of these headings. On the cover of the EPD, you will find key information about the assessed building product. This includes the product's name and a picture of the product. The cover states the owner of the declaration, which is usually the manufacturer of the product. The cover also gives the date of issue and expiry of the EPD. An EPD is valid for a period of five years from its publication. Moving on, you'll find further details regarding the EPD. This includes information such as the thickness or weight of the product and the product classification. You can also find the declared unit, but we'll explain this to you later. The page includes the name of the consultant who performed the life cycle assessment study, the verifier who reviewed and approved the EPD, and the program operator, EPD Ireland. It also indicates whether the EPD applies to a single product, multiple products, or represents an average of similar products. It also includes the standards the EPD complies with, such as Product Category Rules, or PCOR, and EN 15804. As you turn the page, you will find further information about the life cycle assessment methodology employed. This section shows the scope of the LCA, defining the specific life cycle stages covered by the assessment. A life cycle assessment LCA can be conducted in various forms, such as cradle-to-gate or cradle-to-grave. A cradle-to-gate LCA focuses on declaring the environmental impacts that occur during the production phases, up to the point where it leaves the factory gate. A cradle-to-grave LCA, as the name implies, includes the entire life cycle of a product and declares all the impacts associated with its different stages. In EPDs, the different stages of the life cycle of the product are divided into modules. There are three production modules. A1, which covers the quarrying, mining or harvesting of the raw materials. A2, which covers the transport to the production site. And A3, which covers the manufacturing itself. Construction process stage is covered by module A4 the transport to the site, and A5, the integration of the product into the building or infrastructure. Use of the product is covered by modules B1 to B7 in this order. The use, maintenance, repair, replacement and refurbishment, together with operational energy use and operational water use. End of life is covered by four modules, C1, which is deconstruction and demolition, C2, which is the transport to a disposal facility, C3, which is waste processing for reuse, recovery or recycling, and C4, which covers disposal. Finally, module D covers the net benefits and loads arising from the reuse of the product, or the recycling or recovery of energy from waste materials resulting from the construction stage, the use stage and the end of life stage. In building product EPD, A1 to A3, C and D modules are mandatory to be declared with few exceptions, while A4 to A5 and B1 to B7 are optional. In this section, you will also find the declared unit. This unit is crucial 
as it represents the basis for expressing the impact results presented in the EPD and provides a standardized reference point for comparison and analysis. The declared unit specifies the quantity or measure for which the impact results are expressed. It can be expressed per item or assemblage of items, for example, one window. Mass, for example, one ton of cement. Length, for example, one meter of pipe. Area, for example, one square meter of roof elements. Volume, for example, one cubic meter of timber. On the following pages, you'll discover detailed information about the product, including its technical characteristics, performance, and manufacturing process. This section also provides the product's mass, which can be useful when the functional unit is not based on weight for conversions. We have now reached the impact results section, which is presented in tables. The columns in the tables represent the life cycle assessment stages, while each row represents a specific impact considered. Let's delve into the impact indicators covered in the UPD. 1. Global Warming Potential, or GWP. This indicator measures the carbon dioxide, CO2, and greenhouse gas, GHG, emissions associated with the product. It is often referred to as carbon footprint. 2. Stratospheric Ozone Depletion Potential, or ODP. This indicator quantifies the effects of ozone-depleting gases, such as CFCs, HCFCs and halons, which contribute to the depletion of the ozone layer in the stratosphere. 3. Acidification Potential, or AP. Acidification measures the impact of acidic gases, such as sulphur dioxide, SO2, on ecosystems, these gases react with water in the atmosphere, resulting in acid rain that can cause damage to the environment. 4. Eutrophication Potential, or EP. Eutrophication refers to the excessive growth of algae caused by increased concentrations of nitrates and phosphates in water. This can lead to oxygen depletion, ecosystem damage and increased mortality of aquatic fauna and flora. 5. Photochemical Ozone Creation Potential, or POCP. This indicator assesses the potential for the creation of ozone and other air pollutants in the presence of nitrogen oxides, NOx, and volatile organic compounds, VOCs. High levels of POCP contributing gases can contribute to smog and negative impacts on human health, such as increased asthma incidence. 6. Abiotic Depletion Potential This category focuses on the decreasing availability of non-renewable resources due to extraction and underlying scarcity. It includes abiotic depletion for non-fossils and fossil resources. 7. Water Deprivation Potential, or WDP This indicator assesses the potential for water deprivation considering the water usage associated with the product. Understanding the numbers in EPDs requires familiarity with scientific notation. Scientific notation is used for dealing with very large and very small numbers. Let's break it down. When you see a value expressed as 5.6 E10 plus 3, it means 5.6 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of 3, resulting in 5,600. It may sound complicated, but it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is move the decimal place three places to the right. Similarly, if you come across a value written as 1.2 e-05, it means 1.2 multiplied by 10 raised to the power of minus 5 resulting in 0 
In this case, you move the decimal place to the left five times. Now, let's consider the difference between 5.46e plus 01 and 5.46e plus 02. The answer is that 5.46e plus 02, or 546, is 10 times bigger than 5.46e plus 01, or 54.6. The e plus 01 and e plus 02 indicate how many times you need to move the decimal place. If you see a plus, to the right, while if you see a minus, to the left. So, why do EPDs use scientific notation? Simply put, sometimes the numbers involved are either too large or too small to fit in results tables. Take, for example, the value 1.76e-07, which, if written out fully, would be 0 0.0000000176. By using scientific notation, EPDs make it easier to represent and communicate these values efficiently. On the following pages, you can find other impacts of the product that can help you understand its performance in terms of resource use, waste and other environmental impacts. Towards the end of the document, you'll find valuable additional information, including calculation rules, data quality details, scenarios and a declaration of the biogenic carbon content in the product and packaging. Biogenic carbon refers to the carbon stored in biological materials, such as plants or soil. As plants undergo photosynthesis, they accumulate carbon, making bio-based products an important contributor to reducing carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. When products are derived from plants or other renewable sources such as timber, straw or hemp, they store carbon absorbed from the atmosphere during their growth and it remains locked up in the building product until the end of life of the product. The presence of biogenic carbon in a building product is shown as a negative emission since it effectively removes carbon from the atmosphere. However, at the end of life, these emissions are shown as a positive number in Module C3, depending on expected disposal scenarios, which could be through carbon emissions from incineration or landfill gases. At the very end, you will find additional information, references, and if necessary, annexes. Congratulations! You now possess the knowledge to confidently navigate an EPD and understand the numbers within it. With this information, you can grasp the environmental performance of specific products and make informed comparisons. Find out more at epdireland.org.